Okay, hello everyone. I am Mutahara Muzaffari from IMS. Um, and in this session, I'm going to present uh, about the concept of uh, divine law from the perspective of uh, Rumi and John of the Cross, who are the two main uh, mystical poets from the Eastern and uh, Western Mediterranean. I hope you find it interesting. Okay, this is a table of contents. So we will come with the uh, concept of mysticism in Islam and Christianity. And we'll have a, a short uh, a biography of uh, uh, Rumi and John of the Cross uh, and their literary works. And then we come to the definition of divine love and we will compare their views and perspective on divine love, and then we'll come to the conclusion. All right. So uh, mysticism is a uh, insight and uh, intuitive understanding that uh, goes beyond the uh, sense and intellect, and it involves the process of removing the inner obstacles and veils uh, of heart uh, through a spiritual journey. So in this spiritual journey, the mystic becomes, um, in fact, aware of the deeper truth. And in this path, uh, it's a kind of inward journey of self-discovery that requires the perfection of the soul. So the ultimate goal is the divine love and uh, union with God, with the, yes, with God. So if you want to see the notion from the perspective of religion and mysticism, um, although they are go, they are following the same principles, but the perspective and the approaches are different. For example, from the religious perspective, the purpose of creation of this world is for the people to know and worship God. But from the mystical perspective, the pur purpose is for the God. It means the creation of this world is the, for the purpose of the God to be manifested and to be known. So mysticism in Islam and Christianity, they share many concepts and uh, they have many similarities. So in Islam, we have the Sufism and Irfan, and Sufism is actually a practical and a spiritual journey uh, in the, the school of mysticism. But Irfan, it looks in the theoretical and intellectual dimension. And um, in fact, when a seeker uh, goes through this spiritual journey, he's full of expression. He wants to express his uh, uh, experiences. So he uses the language of poetry and, uh, and literature and literary works because they are the elevated language. So the new genre started to appear after the advent of this um, um, new thought and this uh, new perspective in religion. So we have the uh, mystical literature. So in uh, the Islamic world, it started in 11th century with the different mystics, uh, and uh, which are there, they were mystics and poets, and towards the 12th century and 13th century. In the 13th century, it's it reached its peak because we have the Rumi here. He, he's very well known and his works are still being read and um, very well known in the world. And it is uh, actually translated to more than 40 languages. So in Christianity is the same. Uh, the mysticism is a uh, contemplative practices, which ranges from the simple meditative prayer to a deeper contemplation on God's presence. And also the uh, uh, Christian mystics, they also want to express their feelings and their uh, spiritual journey to uh, with the uh, language of poetry. So in the medieval age, we have this uh, mystical literature as a genre from the 12th century to the 14th century to the 16th century, which we have uh, Juan de la Cruz, which is known as John of the Cross. He's a Spanish uh, a mystic and a poet. And his uh, works are um, very much similar, if you read, to the Islamic um, mystics. All right, so if you want to have a short only bi biography of the two uh, poets, uh, Rumi is for the 13th century, and um, he was born in Balkh in Persia, and later he mi migrated to Konya in Anatolia, and in there he gained widespread fame, and he spent the rest of his life there. In fact, he became Mulana. Mulana means the our leader in the school of Sufism. 
and uh, he is widely known as Rumi, and he um, um, introduced the Molavi order, which comes from his name, and also the no notion of uh, whirling dervishes. So this is the practical contemplation and the practical way to show the, uh, in fact, the, the journey of the soul toward the uh, ultimate law. So uh, they are symbolically dancing in a way to show that how the soul is actually detaching from the um, mundane world and reaching toward the ultimate law. And um, Juan de la Cruz, which is known as uh, John of the Cross, he's a 16th century mystic poet. And he brings the notion of dark night of the soul. And he has actually written his thoughts in this um, literary work. And uh, in fact, uh, he uh, describes the soul journey th through the purification and into the divine union. And he, uh, in fact, emphasizes the suffering the soul actually that takes toward this spiritual journey. And his contemporary was Teresa of Avila, and she was also a female mystical uh, poet and uh, had a really great influence on uh, the thoughts of John of the Cross. So uh, to look at the works of Rumi, we can mention Masnavi, Divan and Shams, and also Fihe Mafi. These are the uh, works by Rumi. And for John of the Cross, we have Ascent of Mount Carmel and Dark Night of the Soul and a Spiritual Canticle. And interestingly, the life of these two mystics are very similar because they went and they faced significant adversities in their life uh, because of their mystical thoughts. Because mythical, mystical thoughts is a kind of interpretation of religion, which is not accepted by everyone. So they were actually isolated from their society because of their um, revolutionary thoughts of religion. So in this phase, they felt a kind of adversity. And this was a kind of blessing for them because they provided uh, very distinguishable, uh, distinguished works of art, works uh, of literature. And interestingly, uh, we can see the influence of Islamic mysticism on Andalusian mystics, because in this context, many Christian mystics in Andalusia were influenced by Persian Islamic mysticism, because most of the mystic myst uh, literature which was based on mysticism was in the Persian language. And although Rumi was living in Anatolia, his uh, uh, works of art are all in Persian language. So um, uh, Ibn Arabi, Ibn Abad, Rundi, and San uh, Juan de la Cruz, they are the mystics from this region. And uh, Michael McLean, who is uh, um, uh, actually a European uh, expert in Islamic studies, he says that the works of uh, San Juan de la Cruz are in fact a distillation of Persian Sufi, uh, Sufi poetry translated into Spanish. And he said that it's not a coincidence that it is similar with the uh, Islamic mysticism and Islamic uh, uh, mystical works and literature. It is because of the influence that uh, came from uh, the Islamic, um, actually currents from the Islamic civilization, which came through the travels and the cultural ex exchanges between the East and Western Mediterranean. Okay, uh, so what is divine law? So divine love is a transcendent relation between a uh, human and soul and the divine. And it is a spiritual yearning to unite with divine or experience the divine love. So to reach this divine love, uh, one should purify and transform its soul from the worldly attachment and ego. So in many mystical traditions, in fact, the divine love is considered not only the central message, but also the ultimate goal of a spiritual uh, uh, practice. So uh, here we have a comparative analysis of uh, the notions uh, and, and the concepts that was used in the literary works of these two mystics. And uh, we can see that the language used by these two um, mystics as poet is a love language. 
And why they are using the love language? Because the love language is the only language that can uh, the seeker can show affection toward God. So it is a relationship between a person in love and the beloved. The seeker of love is, in fact, the person in love, and the beloved is God. So Rumi states that a seeker in their quest realizes that without the presence of God, which he uh, mention it as a beloved, their consciousness and existence lose the meaning. So the light of beloved that I highlighted here helps the seeker to uh, perceive life, which is central idea of Sufism, that God's presence illuminates all the understanding. So St. John de la Cruz or St. John also presents this longing for the divine, that life without God's presence is an empty shell that he says, I remained without myself. Without the presence of God, I am without myself. So both of them, they express the transformative power of love that translates the self and brings the soul to the divine. Next one uh, is, okay, now what is the meaning of love? Uh, it, can we define the meaning of that love in the school of mysticism? Interestingly, the, the most of the mystics agree that we cannot bring a definition of love. It is undefinable. Only its effects and consequences can be described. So Rumi expresses the, the limits of reason and, and, and speech in defining the uh, essence of love. So he states that while words are trying to explain the meaning of love, the true understanding comes through the deeper and wordless expression. So he says that I'm ashamed of an explanation of love. So in speaking about love, the tongue is tongueless. So if you want to give a clear example of divine love, you are tongueless. The pen, which is a symbol of the intellect and reason, has no ability to divine love. So when it comes to explain love, the pen splits. It means that it cannot give any definition. So similarly, St. John also highlights the importance of silence law before God. And he says that he, means God, understand only one language, and that is the language of uh, silent law. All right, so love is joy giving. So Rumi uh, actually uh, says that love has the, is the source of joy, is a source of healing and vitality. And love is like a physician of all ills that he says, physician of all ills, I have I've highlighted it here. It cures all the ailments. When he says that the earthly body soared to the sky, in, uh, as I highlighted, earthly body soared to the sky, he shows how love is energizing and moving. And he speaks about the mountain began to dance. So it means that this is an imagery that he uses to convey love's power to bring vitality and joy to the entire universe. So St. John also, he uses uh, another symbol and he says that drinking from the inner wine cellar he represents the deep encounter with God and soul. And his soul is filled with spiritual joy. And then he wanders through the valley and he knows nothing because he have just uh, met God. He's full of joy and he has a joyous freedom that he understands and he doesn't know anything because he's free of the limit limitations and the uh, the worldly attachments. And he's lost the herd, means he's have lost all his pains and now he's free. So interestingly, we can also see the similarities that how they show that this is another characteristic of the divine love as joy in giving. So um, another metaphor that we can see through the works of John of the Cross and Rumi is the metaphor of fire as the metaphor of love. We see the fire uh, is uh, a kind of metaphor uh, which is used vastly um, through all of this uh, literary work. So um, fire has a dual identity or dual nature. It burns, but at the same time, it gives power, it gives energy. So uh, fire is burning and also transforming and purifying and at the same time. So in the poem of Rumi, soul is compared to the furnace. He says, my soul is the furnace. So uh, it's a vessel that holds the fire of love. 
And the fire is uh, not destructive, but purifying force that burns away the ego, the desires, the ignorance. So one should embrace this burning process uh, in the process to achieve the spiritual growth. So those who are blind, as he says, anyone that is blind to this burning, they are ignorant and they fail to realize the deep meaning of law. And St. John also says, introduce the fire as a metaphor of love, as a purifying and he and um, refining. And he says, this is a sweet flame. This is a delightful wound, which uh, represents a spiritual burning that cleanses the soul. All right. So life is, love is life-giving. So in Rumi's verb, love is the uh, foundation of all existence. Without love, neither universe nor human would have come into the being. So the phrase that he says, if there have not been love, how should there have been existence? So love is the uh, creative force behind all the creation. So Rumi connects the life-giving force uh, in a biblical allusion that he says that the pure love was united with Muhammad. This is his religious uh, belief that this pure love uh, is connected with the Prophet Muhammad in his religious belief. So declares that this pure love was united with him and God addresses him, but for thee. So it means that because he is the only person who has united with the pure pure life. So God has created this, uh, this uh, universe because of him. So he signifies the existence of universe was bestowed to him out of this divine love. In in uh, in the um, poems of uh, Saint uh, John, also he represent represented as delicate and pleasant sense, and he represented the love as a word, uh, which is the uh, which is a symbol of Son in the Trinity that we have the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. So through him, the divine love touches the soul and he attributes the grace of divine love to Christ, who uh, through his love offers the soul uh, to taste the eternal uh, life. So um, like the other, um, as, I, as I just mentioned about the dual identity of love, which burns and purifies at the same time, uh, the love is pain and remedy. It is another dual nature of love. So uh, it means that in this line, which is that no physician offers a cure for no illness, the Rumi says. So this is actually reflects the idea that pain is a necessary um, uh, power to healing. So Rumi says that he has become all pain because he is in quest of remedy. The remedy is very important for him. So he suggests that in the spiritual journey, suffering is essential to, um, uh, um, to reach the state of healing and enlightenment. So the transformative pain leads to the growth and healing. So uh, through this uh, green pain, which is in front of the black pain, the black pains are the, the very trivial pains. The, which comes from the anger, which comes from the longing for the, the earthly desire. We have the green pains. The cr green pains are blessing because it makes the soul to seek God and it uh, purifies the soul toward the uh, divine law. And St. John also uh, addresses the living flame of love that tenderly wounds my soul. So he actually signifies the wound, which is the transformative encounter with God that purifies the soul. And this wound is also a blessing for him because it will change him to a better being. So in conclusion, we can see that the comparative study of mysticism can bring us to understand the thoughts of uh, mis mystics or uh, from different perspective, not just the mysticism, even in literature and art, to know the nations and to promote the dialogue among different nations. So by studying uh, St. John of the Cross and also Rumi, we can see that although they are having a long distance, geographic geographically they are very far and they are speaking in different languages, but their thoughts about mysticism are very similar. So 
For both of them, the divine love is the ultimate goal of a spiritual journey and the transformation of the soul. So we can see that for both of them, divine love is joy-giving, life-giving, and it at, at the same time, it gives pain and remedy. At the same time, it burns and purifies. And the relationship between the seeker and God is the love relation. And uh, the language that, that we they want to speak speak in order to show the affection toward the divine love is a love language. So uh, uh, interestingly, we can see that in many aspects, they are actually saying the same thing, but and using the same symbols and metaphors in order to show their uh, experience in the uh, spiritual journey toward the divine love. Thank you so much for listening.